one class three on it. That's it. It's a great surfing river and a fun yak, but as far as if you're out there for the thrill, it's a family float ride. That's what that one is. All right. So but then, like you know, the Noel Chucky, uh, it, it's got some serious stuff. And, and we went one time and then the river was up. They have a measurement called four. And it's how many, how many cubic feet of water flowing through the gauge at the moment. And the National Park Service says if it's over four, commercial outfitters can't go on the river. Now, individuals say you can't stop them, but commercial, you can't put people on the river if it's over a four. We went one day, it was just under four. So the, the guy, uh, Wahoo, running the Wahoo's Outdoor Adventures up in Blower Rock, that's who I went with uh, about every time. He's, he's great. And uh, put a plug in for you, Jeff. All right. Uh, <laughs> you're in Boone, Blowing Rock, that area of uh, mountains, go see Wahoo. I mean, you will have a wahoo of a time. I can guarantee it to you. <laughs> That's great. And um, but anyway, uh, he he was a play. Normally he's kind of a jovial, cut up guy, but he, he got real serious. He's like, this is no, this is no play day. This river's high. You will listen to us. You will do what we say when we say do it, or you're in trouble and somebody's going to get hurt. Well, you're going down a river and you've got we one one place in that river's got a set of of, of uh, waves that, that run normally about four or five feet and about five, I think it's like 10 in a row. You know, if you hit it just right, it's a great ride. Boom, boom, boom. They were running eight to 10 feet that oh day. <laughs> oh man, was it a rip. <laughs> okay. I mean, we're, we're vertical, boom. I mean, vertical, yeah. boom. But <laughs> there's also, there's also a rapid called Maytag. Oh, it's a hydraulic. If you get hung in there, you can't get out. Oh. It's an undercut. The, the water goes over, the rock cuts, and it's back up under the rock, and so it sucks back. And it's a hydraulic. It'll suck your raft in. Mm. Okay? So when those guys are saying, I saw all this about fellowship. <laughs> when, you're, when you're going down that river and those guys are saying, row, row, everybody row, they're not playing. You get, you can see it, and somehow, you know, somehow stop, and they'll be like, and they're like, "Bro," because if we're not all going in the same direction, we're gonna get sucked. I and mean, we, we went over one, and it started pulling you back, and, and he's, they start screaming, at you, and everybody starts digging like crazy, and it took all that effort to get pulled out of it, because we were about to get sucked back in and eat. We were, we were lunch, okay? Yeah, yeah, lunch. All right. Now, I've been on the river with people, and the guys tell them to do one thing. Some boat's over there doing backwards. <laughs> back with the and you're over here, you know, they're going like this, you're over here doing like this. What happens? We're going kind of, we're countermanding one another. Mm-hmm. See, if you're not in harmony, that's, a, that's just a lesson on harmony, okay? If you're not walking in harmony, mm-hmm. you, you can't be in fellowship. And see, fellowship with God means you're walking in harmony with God. We're walking lockstep with Him. All right, my um, my commencement speaker for Rainbow Bible Training College Center back then, it's college, was Oral Roberts. Not not a bad guy to have do your commencement. All right, uh, Brother Roberts, and he his 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 message to us graduates that year was tracking with God, and he used the Old Testament scripture talked about that we're like hinds feet. And we talked about how the, the the deer when he runs, his feet go down front, the rear come up and land in the same spot. So it's boom, and the others come forward and hit that same spot. And we're at the hindest feet. God is the front. He's leading the way, and we're landing in his footprints. And then as those feet come back, the forwards go forward, God goes again, and we come up. As long as we're tracking with God, we're the hindest feet. What is that? We're in fellowship with God. We're walking with God. It's in this place, okay? Now let's look at Hebrews eleven six because because we're talking about this. Hebrews eleven six. But but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For they that come to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Of them that diligently seek him. What are we talking about? We're talking about fellowship, panting after God. As the deer panteth after the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Amen? You know? My soul longeth for thee. My flesh thirsteth for thee. As in a dry and thirsty land. Amen? 
Glory to God. You know, that, that's panting after God. That's having, having desire for God. That's loving God. Glory to God. I'm, I forgot to share. I'm trying to share, guys. Hallelujah. Because we want everybody to hear what we're saying. Amen. Amen. Praise the be to the Lord. Hallelujah. We can do a little, a little Medea and go A to the men. Hallelujah. Glory. All right. Now, so, we, 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 you know, they that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, charismatic word of faith, people, listen, I love us, but one of the things that we've got to watch out for is seeking what God has and not God. God, it's okay to pursue and act, go after what God has made provision for. But we cannot live our life in pursuit of the blessings of God without having first been in pursuit of God. Okay? Why? Because the pursuit of God brings us into that place where what? Where the Holy Spirit takes what the full discourse of God, takes the full, um, takes from this Logos, and produces a rhema in us, what? It becomes a message heard that gives us faith. But that's going to come here. <coughs> it's birthed in that fellowship of God. It's birthed in the pursuit of God. It's birthed in diligently seeking God. God. Not his benefits. Now, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name, and forget not his benefits. Okay? Who forgiveth all your iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeems your life from, from destruction, and then, and, sh and covers it, and showers it, or whatever, with lo uh, loving, kindness. loving kindness. All right? So we have to understand that, yes, it, God has made provision for us. God has, and, and we, and that's, so, we don't want to go to the other stream because, well, I can't, I, I'm not going to ask God for anything because that's not, no, I'm going to, go, we're going to throw the baby out with the bath water. Okay? When you take a baby and give it a bath, you don't, and the door, water's dirty, you throw the water out. You don't throw the baby out. All right? You got the baby clean. Now, we're just trying to make a point that the pursuit of what God has is all right, but it has to be within the parameters of the first pursuing God. Okay, we have we have to have pursuit with God, so the Spirit of God can take the logos, produce a rhema, so we have heard what the Spirit is saying, and that we have faith to act on the things that God has for us to act on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, what Hebrews twelve two? You know, just just a little bit down the road. a little bit down the road for Hebrews eleven six. Okay, looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. <laughs> Glory to God. And despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now notice here, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the, the uh, uh, finisher of our faith. Okay. Now, uh, one translation says something like this. It says, uh, looking unto Jesus, the beginning and the... Uh, Now, did that say the end? Um, developer. There we go. Developer. He's the developer of our faith. Why? Because in fellowship we get to know him. In fellowship we get to understand God. In fellowship we learn how he operates, how he functions. In fellowship we're in the raft and actually, I can tell you, when you first get a bunch of people in a raft, you got a guide back there, you got six people, usually like three people or four people on each side of the raft. And then they're all kind of trying to figure out, you know, and lots of, you'll have people going in the water and pull it back, and the other's got the raft or out, and they're getting ready to put it in, or one side's rowing and this side's not rowing, and, you know, and they're, they're out of sync. And what happens is that the raft does this. Because one side pulls and the other side's up. So it pulls whatever, then they go in and it pulls back. Well, that, you ain't, it's taking you twice as long to go anywhere. All right? Because you're zigzagging. You know? Not, maybe that might, may not be zigzagging like this, but you're zigzagging. 
But eventually, you know, have you ever seen sculling? Mm-hmm. That's where the guy sitting in their little megaphone at the front of the little, these little skinny boats, mm-hmm. and they're all there doing like this, you know, and they're mm-hmm. doing like this, and they're they're going, stroke, 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 stroke. Mm-hmm. They all get into harmony, and they're hitting the water. All those oars are hitting at the same time and pulling back. Mm-hmm. Boom. Boom. Five, six, whatever, how many rows of, of rowers are in there, and they're all hitting at the same time. Because they they're giving out a cadence. They're giving out a cadence. They're giving out. What's going on? They've come into harmony. And now they're acting as one. And see, when we get into fellowship with God, and we see how he operates, how he functions, how he works, how he does, amen, then we get into the stroke with God. We can become the hinds feet with God. We're landing in his in his pattern. Okay? And all the while, the Spirit of God's taking parts of the Word of God and he's revealing it to us in this setting where there's so much confidence in our hearts towards God because we know how he works. We know how he operates. We know how he does. And because we've come into harmony with that, as the Spirit of God speaks to our heart about things, healing, prosperity, you know, uh, different things out of the Bible that, that you are in need of or, 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 or have need, or want or God wants you to have, the concept of it being for you becomes not foreign, but becomes reality because you've been spending time here. And I've been white water ranching so many times with, with Wahoo's group. I know how he operates. Okay? I know how he does things. <clears throat> All right? And, and how he does things. And, and because I know how he does things, then I can, I, but if I go out there, I know what to expect. I know what to do. I, I know how he's going to do things, how he's going to handle things, how things are going to be done. All right? And they go down the river and, you know, they... They get to, there's a certain rock, you know, and they all put their paddles up, hit the paddles in the middle of the river, you know? You know, so there's some mystic things. It's not really, really, they just do it because they, they just, it makes kind of like tour guide stuff, you know? <laughs> they, and they also ask you not to kill the snakes. What? What? Because if the snake up on that rock, on the rock, sunning, you go and splat it. The next group comes by and sit in there sunning, it kind of stinks. <laughs> oh, okay, you can create, a, you can create an odor for everybody else. Okay, you know, don't, don't kill the snakes, guys. Hallelujah. All right. So, so faith is revealed to us. It's, it's, it's all in this logos. Everything you need from God: fellowship, understanding, walking with God, the blessings of it. Everything is held within this logos. Hebrews chapter 1 says that Jesus was the... Um, well, let's look over there real quick. Look at Hebrews chapter 1. I don't want to misquote it because I don't, you know... I'm thinking of the paraphrase in my head and I'm, I'm about to be um, give you that. All right, Hebrews 1.3. What does it say? And he... Um, who being the brightness of his glory... The express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, he had purged himself by, our, uh, he purged by himself our sins, sat down the right hand of the majesty on high. Hallelujah. What does it say here? He says he is what? He is the express image. Of who? Of his person. Jesus is the express image of the person of the Father. He's the Logos. He's the Word of God. He is the full discourse. He fully represents everything about the Father. His will, His desire, His wants, His plans. Okay? Excuse me. Pick this up. Okay? How many of you ever heard a quote? 
uh, heard, heard people quote about, you know, I hath not seen, and ear hath not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. <laughs> but they always stop there. You, you just get so frustrated. Why stop? Man, they're right up Romans, what, three? Somebody help me out here. Brother Bill, you're my walk of concordance. I know, but my computer's at home. (laughs) (laughs) You use your computer? I thought that was all coming out of your head. (laughs) Sometimes it does. First Corinthians 2 9. Thank you, Andrew. Now we're not in the right book. Dear Lord Jesus. That's why I wouldn't have found it until next week. But you know what's in there. I know what's in there. All right. Because it is written, I have not seen the ear or heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But, now why do people not go to the but? Mm-hmm. They're always doing the but when you say you can have something, then they go but and give you all the reasons you can't have it. God hath revealed them to us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches the things of God, searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now, here we go back over here. What is, remember, so we, Jesus, this is Jesus. He is the Word. He is the Logos. Okay? He is the express image of his God, the Father's person. We know that faith comes by the spoken or revealed word, the rhema of God. Here, Hebrew, I mean, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10 tells us that it is the Spirit who reveals. What's He revealing? He's revealing Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the Logos. What is the Logos? It's the express image of His, the Father's person. We have the Holy Spirit at work. (coughs) We have the Trinity at work. And faith being produced in us. Because Jesus is the Logos. That is the express image of the Father. The Spirit of God brings a rhema out of that Logos and reveals to that. The things that are hid, the things that I have not seen nor ear heard is revealed to us supernaturally by the Holy Spirit. So you can't run around just, you know, you never know what the Lord is going to do. Please. Well, we just wish we knew what God was going to do. Oh, my. Why do you think you, why do you think you can't know what God's going to do? Well, I've not seen here, not heard, neither did any the heart of man the things that God prepared for them that love him. Yes, sir. We're going to get you a trial for hee haw next week, buddy. Do a, re, do a remake of hee haw. It worked in the 70s. I don't think it would work today. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Kind of like the Dukes of Hazzard. You know, it worked in the city. It won't work today. All right? You know? We, we cut ourselves short because we think, I can't know God. Yet God says you can know me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you. Yes. One of the things the Scripture teaches us is that Jesus wanted us to be one with Him and the Father, just like Him and the Father were one. That, thou, that, that, that they be in us, and us in the, and we in them, as I am in thee, and that thou art in me. Yeah. He wanted us to come into that harmony place where there was a harmony between man and God. Between us and the Father. And so, as a believer, it's going to have to take place in fellowship. We have to be in that place of of fellowship with God in order for us to be able to hear the... Remember, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Yes. What does it say over and over again in the book of Revelation? As as, as the churches are being addressed, 
He that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. And we've said this before. He ain't talking about these things hanging on the side of your head. Okay? Those things are for natural hearing. The Spirit's not speaking to your natural ear. He's speaking and taking Logos and making it revealed and becomes a rhema in your heart. And that produces faith. And then you act on that faith <coughs> and get answers and get results. And walk in places with God. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And so this comes out, this comes in place of fellowship. Well, what are some of the things we need to do in fellowship? Well, you know, one, the, one aspect of fellowship, how did I think, who came up here and took my award? <laughs> All right. So we got fellowship. You know what? Part of fellowship takes place in the realm of meditation. All right. Let me find this over in Joshua 1.8. All right. Joshua being addressed by God. Uh, you know, and God's talked to him, and, you know, uh, after Moses is left. He says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Okay? That's Joshua 1 8. Well, there's, there's several things in that passage. One is, we talked about this before, the book of the law, obviously, uh, in New Testament terminology, would be the Bible. You know, in New Testament thought. Because at that time, what they had for Bible was the, what was referred to as the law. Moses' five books were referred to as the Pentateuch, the law. Okay. We know at that time there was only one other book it's considered canon now. Job. Alright? Job is the oldest book in the Bible. It was written before Genesis, all that. It was written for all of it. Okay. Actually, written before that. But, so this book of all, the word of God, so not the part out of your mouth, but down and meditate that. Now the word meditate, literally in the Hebrew, means to mutter. I know we're blocking up all the viewing of everything, so let me do a slide by here. Literally means to mutter. And I would say, I would dare say everybody in this room at some point in time in your life has muttered. Some of you younger people in school have muttered about your teachers. You ever see if I see any guilty faces out here? Yeah, yeah teacher gives you an assignment, you're ever you're out. Now, any, any students ever done that before in your life? Yeah, even ones who graduated years ago? They've all done it. You know? Um, principal comes on, makes an announcement over the speaker. You're muttering. You're not talking to anybody, you're talking to yourself. You're just talking out loud. You're thinking, or your thoughts are coming out of your mouth. And literally, this is what we're talking about here. The word meditation in Hebrew refers to mutter. You mutter something. Well, what does it tell you to mutter? This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but then you shall meditate. Shall not. Where does it say? That? See, we're not talking about just thinking. How do you know? Because it said not to let it depart out of your mouth. So we know it's talking about the, 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 the vocal part of muttering. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Thou shalt mutter it day and night. You speak it. You declare it. You're saying it. Amen. You're, you're saying it. You're meditating on it. See, and you're, what are you doing? You're feeding on it. You're contemplating it. And it's, not, we talk about the Holy Spirit is the one who comes and makes the revelation. What does Jesus call the Holy Spirit? It's called the Paraclete, Paracletos. One of the, one of the main translations we have in the King Jimmy um, is Comforter. Yet we know from uh, uh, for the study of the word pericle and its variants, uh, one of the variants, pericletos, um, not only carries the idea of the comforter, but the helper, the strength of understand by the intercessor, okay, the advocate, and then the teacher. 
Remember Jesus said, I'll send you another comforter and he shall bring to your remembrance all things whatsoever said to you. See, that's why I, I, I believe there, it would be better to say, I'll send you a teacher and he'll bring everything to your remembrance that I said to you. Okay? The comforter, now I'll not leave you comfortless. Okay? Well, that makes sense for him to be called the comforter in that. But that meaning was, was broader than just a narrow of, he's here to comfort us. I'm going to send, I'm going to send another after my same man as myself, the paraclete. And he's going to bring to your remembrance everything I taught you. Everything I said to you. What? I'm sending another teacher. And he's going to continue to teach you. See, as we feed on the Word of God, we meditate on the Word of God, the teacher's there. Okay? Now, I, I, I help kids in school, and you know, one of the things I do is, is in my position is I have to, you know, help the, the, the kids. And I'm, I'm tutoring math. Oh, I've learned all my math again. <laughs> I hadn't done math in 40, well, I graduated from high school 42 years ago this year. Yeah. Well, I don't, my, my years of graduating from high school is old enough to be some kids' grandparents. And, <laughs> hallelujah. All right? Glory to God. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you, the class is taught. And as soon as the class is over, you go back. And I don't understand. And you go back and you teach it all over again. You do it you do all over again. And you keep doing that until what? The light comes on. And the Holy Spirit comes and takes the Je what Jesus taught us, what Jesus revealed to us, and what Jesus showed us. And he keeps striving with you. And as you meditate and feed on it and you're, you're contemplating, he's teaching until the light comes, until the revelation comes, until the understanding of it comes. Hallelujah. And what happens when faith comes? Then we become doers of the word. We have to be doers of the word, not hearers only. Deceiving ourselves. What's, what's deception? To, to believe you can know it and not act on it, that you'll get an answer, is, is self-deception. Okay? And so we end up here um, in this understanding where faith is coming from, how we get into that is with fellowship with God. And part of that fellowship with God is to meditate, to look into his word. Why? Because his word is who he is. It reveals, it shows us, it paints the picture of God. And not only did we have the, the written word, we had the, the, the testimony and the, the living word, the written word about the life and ministry of Jesus. And that paints the picture of of God in action. And we get to see God in action. We get to see the Logos in action. Oh God. Oh Lord. Heal them if it be thy will. Now that is a legitimate statement. If you don't know what the will of God is. But it's also a clear cut definition you ain't been in the Word. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that to be condemning. Because if you go to the Word, you will find out what God's will is. Amen. But it sounds spiritual. Lord, heal our dear sister, if it be thy will. Well, why don't you go to the Bible and find out what his will is. Save that old ragged sinner if it be your will. Well, number one, why don't you find out what his will is so you can pray effectively? Yes, yes. <clears throat> Bosworth said it. Hagen picked it up, uh, repeated it. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Remember the man that came to Jesus one day and said, Thou canst, thou canst, thou canst make me uh, whole or clean, clean, clean. And Jesus said, I will be thou made whole. What was it that Jesus had to address? Because the man came to him and didn't say, if it be your will, you can heal me. Amen. If, if thou wilt, thou canst make me whole. And Jesus said, what? I will. See, the man believed that he could. He just didn't know if he was willing. And until the willing part was settled, he couldn't receive. Jesus didn't go, hey, watch this, dude. Boom! Whether you believe it or not, you got it. No, that's not how it worked. 
The man said, if thou wilt, thou canst make me go. And Jesus says, I will. He had to turn the if it be thy will <clears throat> into the I know it's your will. Because the man didn't question his ability. He questioned his willingness. If y'all know what that is right off, we'll write the script up here. <clears throat> it wasn't a matter of the ability of God. You can go talk to about any Christian who really believes God's real and ask him, can God heal? Oh yeah, God can heal. You can go find the most died in the wool Southern Baptist and they'll tell you they believe God can heal. But their question is not God can he, but is he willing? And I, I say that, you know, you may as well go on to the Pentecostal holiness or the Pentecostals also. Because I've been around them too. And they're, you know, they're Lord, be thy will. And you're like, hey, did you read your Bible? You know, I, I one, lay out, one day at, at, back in our old church, I was up front. I hadn't been saved long, but I had more sense than, than some of those been saved for 40 years. And she let me know that she was the man born blind, had Job, uh, had, uh, was suffering like Job, and had Paul's thorn. Why she couldn't see good. And she wore the, we, 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 we would refer to as the Coke bottle glasses. You've seen those, they're so thick that their eyes even look big, when they, you know, because their eyesight's so bad. And the Lord, she was suffering like Job, like the man born blind. She was, God was going to get some glory out of this thing. And, you know, had Paul's thorn. And I thought, my Lord, you are one hot shot spiritual <coughs> dude. <laughs> huh? I think so. He says, if thou wilt, thou canst make, thou, uh, thou canst make me clean. Matthew 8 and 3. So Matthew and Luke. Luke 5 and 13. Okay, so yeah. Matthew 8 and 3. Okay. So, so <laughs> Matthew 8 and 3. And Luke what? 5 and 13. Luke 5 what? 13. 13. What's that? It's the if thou wilt. Wow. It's probably Wilt. That's yeah. King Jimmy. Uh, he said, I will be thou. And then Jesus said, I, I will be. When you talk to people, they don't question God's ability to do it. They question whether or not he's willing to do it or to do it for them. Will he do it for them? <clears throat> Is it his will that they be healed? And I'm going to tell you, unless you're having this, through this, of the love us, you're not going to know the answer to that. Because it is in that place of intimacy with God that the Spirit speaks to us and the rhema, the revealed word, comes to our heart. Well, I know it says that. I know that's in the Bible. But I just don't believe God's going to do it for me. Well, go ahead, dummy. and got to get anything. I see people fight harder to keep their sicknesses and not get healed and not get blessed. They fight hard. If they fought as hard to receive from God as they did not to get from God, they'd be walking around healed. From the top of their head to the soles of feet to the tip of toes of multimillionaires. Yeah. Amen. They put so much effort in why they can't have something. And I can tell you, it's because they're not spending time here. Why? Because you hang around God enough, he'll get off on you. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you hang around God enough, he'll, he'll get off on you. True. Remember when they brought the disciples in and they rebuked them for teaching and preaching Jesus? And uh, you know they they stood up and said we can't do we can't do anything but what we know what we've seen and, and one of the things that said this is and they took note of them mm -hmm. they were ignorant mm -hmm. and unlearned men but they had been with Jesus mm -hmm. Peter the night he denied the Lord they kept saying you're one of them no I'm not you're one of them yes you are no I'm not no I'm not finally one says your speech doth betray thee mm -hmm. wow now Peter was an old burly fisherman. If he was fishing today and this was ministry of Jesus, he'd been, he'd been an F-bomb dropper. 
Probably every other word. All right? That's the, I mean, uh, I told my wife, I said, I went to, went to work at that school. I heard that, that word more in one month than I heard my whole life put together. I, I told somebody, I said, if they couldn't use the F bomb, they sound like a motorboat because all they would be able to say is going, because they wouldn't have anything else coming out of their mouth. There is no other descriptive word in the vocabulary. You think, drop that out of your vocabulary. You're, you're, number one, you're shorten how long it takes you to say anything. Because <laughs> you have about 60 in a, in a full word sentence. Wow. You know? And, uh, but Peter was an old brother fisherman. He, and all of a sudden, that old rugged, you know, cussing Peter. How do you know? Because he reverted back to that in that moment. He began to swear, he began to curse. So it's not sound like he'd been with Jesus. Then he went out and wept bitterly in Jesus and prayed for him that after you're converted, you'll strengthen the brethren. And he went out and you know wept and cried because he had he had denied the Lord. Alright? But he, see, the point of that was he had been with Jesus for three and a half years. His language changed. And when you spend time with the Lord, your language changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't mean you just stop cussing. See, it wasn't just the fact that people wasn't cussing. It wasn't the fact he was absent from you know dropping a few whatever it was bad word for that day. It was the way and the content of how he talked was like Jesus. It was different than it was before. Remember Peter? Master, we've toiled all night and hadn't caught a thing. But at your word, we'll let down the net. Man full of faith and power. No, patient and power. <laughs> Why? They were washing the nets. About, you know, he let down the net. What? The old scrubby net that was all ragged and everything. He threw that overboard. Took it back out. Because they had washed all the other nets. They were taking them good nets back out there. They, just, they fished all night and just got them cleaned up. Took out the old one. And that's why it almost broke. They lost out on the full harvest by not acting in full faith. <laughs> they taken out the good nets, they would have sunk the boats. And then Jesus would have made the ball back to shore full. All right? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So, we're going to conclude here to this, for this week. And like I said, next week, if you're watching us on Facebook, uh, we encourage you, uh, order. Uh, you can order from rhema.org.